Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us to our webinar today, how to make cloud migration fast, foolproof and free uh, with our partners DT and Highstacks. Uh, with me today, I will be having Tolga Dincher, CEO of DT, one of our partners powering alternative cloud in, uh, in Turkey, and Edwin Kuz, Global Sales Director of Highstacks, our partner, uh, our ISV partner for, for, for migrations. Uh, so we will be speaking about how Virtuoso is enabling the alternative cloud and how we are helping cloud providers to create their uh, private public clouds, how we are solving as well the migration challenge with our partner um, uh, Highstacks, and as well at the end we will show you a case study um, of our, one of our partners uh, based in Turkey. And at the end I, I will be having Andy Pugh, our global director of um, alliances, who will be helping with the Q&A session. Um, so let me give you a little background about Virtuoso. Uh, we are in the market since 21 years, um, uh, powering, uh, we started from the hosting market, powering the creating and powering the containers, then we decided to go to the hyper uh, converge uh, infrastructure, and then last three years we decided to start powering the alternative clouds. Um, alternative clouds in in all their uh, in all the in all their types. It can be infrastructure as a service. It can be platform as a service or software as a service. For this, we made two acquisitions uh, last year in order to get a full stack of cloud solutions. From a technical perspective, we have 116 patents and uh, uh, patents that show that that our team and our technical team is a robust team. And uh, we are powering alternative clouds with 700 cloud providers worldwide. Um, why Virtuoso? Why working with us? So, so our solutions are built for cloud providers. Any cloud provider, any type, it can be a, an MSP, a CSP, a VAR, an ISV, who want to build a cloud, a private or a public cloud to go to, uh, to, mar uh, to market. It's easy to use. We took all the complexity of the technology and made it easy for our partners um, to uh, to create their clouds and move forward, making any cloud possible. It can be a private cloud, a public cloud, a hybrid cloud, in all the tangents that are there, um, providing a fast time to revenue and the profitability to our partners. Um, so we pass from a technical side and create easiness from the technical side to a business side where we are giving as well the possibility to our cloud providers partners to get uh, 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 in a in a in a faster time to revenue and as well in a in a profitability and growth of their companies. Um, how do we power the alternative cloud and why we chose to to provide and to power the alternative cloud? So as you see in this um, in this uh, graphic that we are that infrastructure as a service and platform as a service are 30% of the hyperscale, of the non-hyperscale in alternative markets. So we decided to focus on these markets and provide solutions for our partners to go to market within this alternative cloud and go against the hyperscaler. So that we have today hyperscalers that are getting the market using their technologies for for infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, but we have as well some partners that don't want to use hyperscale. So we are giving this possibility to our partners by using our solutions. Uh, uh, as well for, for, the, for the giving the local partners and local uh, cloud providers possibility to keep the data local based on the re regulations and uh, giving them the possibility to have a full range of, of solutions from infrastructure as a service to platform as a service and then creating an X as a service. X as a service can be a software as a service, for example. Um, selling cloud, um, selling cloud in an easy manner. Uh, we know that uh, the, the, the ideation of uh, cloud is now taking and everyone now is uh, thinking cloud ready and uh, is, uh, is uh, moving uh, towards cloud. But uh, now we are making uh, all the clouds uh, easy to use and uh, better support. And, uh, and as well, giving the possibility to be in a hybrid mode where, where everyone can use all the clouds and create their own, their own clouds. Why do we need a, an alternative cloud services? Uh, so, so today you have an MSP or a cloud provider. It can be an MSP or a value add reseller buying from a hyperscale cloud. So the, the, the issues that we are seeing there and the challenges that we are seeing there is the cost is heavy, it's complex from a technical uh, perspective, 
there is a lock in you can go in but it's very very hard for you to go out uh, there is a lack of support from both sales and technical perspective to call them to arrive to speak to someone in the hyperscaler space it's very very difficult and as well the data location and so and uh, having a cloud a, a sovereign cloud um especially in europe because we see that gdpr is forcing the, the 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 service providers and the cloud providers to have the data locally so so this is one of the challenges that that uh, our cloud providers or the cloud providers that are playing in the alternative cloud are, are 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 facing then we have another way to do it we have the fact of using an enterprise uh, cloud uh, management uh, uh, a vmware or a nutanix and we see there that there is a complex the, the complexity is coming from the, the from the cost the cost is very very heavy and as well there is a limited range of uh, cloud services it's not made for cloud providers it's not made for a cloud thinking it's made for an enterprise thinking and the roadmap is uh, the roadmap of these solutions are made from a uh, technical perspective to towards the enterprise um we are seeing life with cloud with cloud uh, ice we are seeing the 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 same way our cloud providers are seeing the, their 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 roadmaps and the third way to do it is to build it by ourselves so a cloud provider can be building their solutions by themselves um and here there are two complexities first complexity is the fact that we are uh creating a uh, a a solution that we cannot roll back that once we go into one development it would be um going in and it would the, the rollback or the, the 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 management of this solution would be uh difficult and the second uh, complexity is the cost because we need to create uh, a team this team should manage maintain develop and we need to make sure that this development is working at the end of the day plus all the cloud capabilities from the billing perspective which which makes it more complex so we are developing a solution and we, it's uh, difficult to manage it and difficult to develop it and we have some issues in order to do the reconciliation of the bill so these are the issues that we are seeing when a cloud provider would like to build a cloud solution whether a private cloud solution or a public cloud solution now why virtuoso why are we how are we bringing solutions to all of this so we are based on an open standard we are not recreating the wheel or reinventing the wheel we are based on a on a on a on an open standard called openstack so we are a production ready openstack uh, we are designed for cloud providers we are bringing the possibility for cloud providers to ease their their their, their management we are having a self-service portal we are making sure that the creation and the way service providers or cloud providers are selling their solutions is embedding our solutions uh uh and creating for them the possibility by by then to to have more margins because if it's a, a solution that is easy to use easy to manage that means that we need less people that means that the margin of the sales that we will be having on top of this solution is uh is high uh, it's better for end users and end users can be smbs or enterprise we are giving them possibility with the self-service portal to create and manage their private clouds uh or their vms making sure that uh, the things are moving in the right way and it's hyper converged so we are going into modern standards as i said before we are not reinventing the wheel we are going into where the future is going bringing the technologies that the that the, that the future is going to use like kubernetes like storage as a service but giving them in an open standard called open so every every partner today is 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 no 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 these challenges and we are but there are there are other challenges that are preventing them to change so we need a better cloud platform we need an alternative cloud platform but there are some challenges that are preventing us from from going that path and one of these challenges is cloud migration so everyone is asking how can i migrate from wherever i am today to a better cloud platform that you are proposing today and this is why i will be handing it to edwin who will be speaking about high stack solution that is giving us the possibility to do this go ahead edwin thank you ahmed yeah my name is edwin i'm the head of global sales for high stacks so today it's a unique experience because i don't have to sell since uh, the migration is for free this was not a spoiler because the webinar title says it already free and foolproof so uh, let me tell you about uh, the challenges and who we are first. 
Next slide, please. So Hystex uh, was founded six years ago with the focus on migrations. Uh, the company itself, the people, the founders, and 80% of the team used to work in other companies, always doing some cloud stuff. So the cloud expertise is much bigger. For example, we did before Hystex disaster recovery as a service, and we had special use cases, and saw that there is a need for a focus on the migration. Uh, since then, we have done more than 100,000 uh, uh, machine migrated, so uh, you can really be sure that this solution is field or battle proofed and available in scale. Next slide. Well, this is uh, self explanatory. We have some, uh, some big names among our customers and partners, so, uh, well, okay. We can talk about the telcos, for example. Why do we have such a strong presence in telcos? Because all of them use OpenStack-based clouds, like Virtuoso as well. So uh, this is actually nice that I can use this as a chance to uh, point out that we have big expertise in OpenStack. OpenStack is specific. Cloud vendors, Red Hat, Canonical, Platform 9, WeScaler, all OpenStack cloud vendors. Um, so uh, we manage all platforms. But uh, for sure, we have a special special expertise in OpenStack. So good for Vitoza. Next slide. The cloud migration market. So as you can see, this is really wow. Uh, from uh, 88 billions to 515. So we are now probably somewhere at 125 or something because it starts with 2019. Uh, so it will still not double, triple, but quadruple. Uh, because 20.8% is per year. CAGR means compound annual growth. So there's a lot of music in this uh, cloud migration market. Um, for Virtuoso, well, they are not in a migration business. They want to sell their cloud solutions. But for all the MSP partners here, it's good to know that there are so many upcoming migrations. So this can be an additional revenue stream uh, stream because now uh, it's for free but uh, later of course you should and could could and should uh, charge for the migration and uh, also it shows obviously that the overall cloud business is also growing because the migrations are of course relative to the cloud uh, growth itself so uh, this is for both sides a very nice um, slide and future next one so why we developed high stakes? Um, we found out while we were doing disaster recovery as a service that uh, there are different platforms, obviously, and uh, we also had the uh, the issue like uh, point two MSPs were required to learn multiple solutions. Uh, we had, for example, some guys who were focused only on doing providing disaster recovery for physical servers to AWS. So they did it every day, physical servers to AWS. Uh, they could do it with eyes closed, but uh, if then they needed to do it towards uh, Azure or GCP, they had an issue because every cloud works a little bit different. And that's uh, the advantage if you have a single tool which simply covers all platforms, no matter which source, no matter which target, you just have to learn this tool and you're always on a safe side. And OpenStack, as mentioned earlier, is specific anyhow. And we are focused and specialized on migration, DR, and backup to OpenStack. Next. So some typical challenges is uh, that, well, the whole process uh, seems troublesome because, as we all know, the devil sits in detail. Sometimes there is a uh, strange configuration, a firewall placed somewhere from an architect who already left the company, no one else is aware of this, so the devil sits really in the detail. No migration process is the same. Uh, and the costs uh, of uh, the change, well, and uh, the migration costs in relation to the short-term ROI, we all know that the uh, customers move to the cloud, uh, not only because of the price, actually, I think Gartner, they said number one reason is agility, number second is scalability, and number three is the price, but 
well, number three is still quite relevant. And then, surprise, surprise, uh, they don't save anything. The costs are even higher than expected. And it starts with the migration process, which very often turns uh, out more uh, intense and cost intense than, than expected which is also due to the partners who raise the wrong expectations. And uh, with high stakes here, you are on the safe side, also regarding time and resources needed. So our solution is a very fast migration solution. I remember from one of our Fortune 500 banks, customers, they calculated when they do the migration of, uh, it was 43,000 machines manually by themselves. Uh, it would take them 70, 70, 70 many years. Uh, we did it in five months. So, and they had a big IT department, 12,000 people. Um, so you can, of course, migrate also to Virtuoso in a manual way with a set of scripts and some tools. But believe me, if you have uh, hundreds of uh, VMs, then you want to have some automation in place. And regardless, any vertical or territory migration is needed because um, we have customers. Uh, there's the more servers, the bigger, uh, the better. And uh, insurance companies, banks, they have thousands of servers. But we also have customers, logistic companies, hospitals. They all need backup and disaster recovery and have some machines and want to make benefit of the cloud, obviously. And uh, we territories, you know, the cloud market in, in Germany, where I'm located, Everyone is using the cloud, but just one. They are so-called single-homed from a cloud perspective. And now they are thinking, should they also go multi, uh, like in US? In US, it's not a question if, it's just a question how many. If three clouds are enough, or better four or five. So the development, there are always migrations. If the companies are already using clouds heavily, then they just have the phase of multi-cloud. So they, there's migration to more clouds. If there is no cloud at all, uh, and there are regions uh, where the hyperscales are not available yet. There is, of course, all the migrations just coming in the future. So uh, cloud migrations will take place no matter which uh, region. And if the clouds exist for 20 years or just arrived, it's always a demand for migrations. Next one. For the end users, the point is that uh, even the POC can be quite intense. So I saw POCs for a month. And uh, this is also a question of, of resource, having someone who is uh, who is who who can do this. Um, and uh, so it's good if there's a nice flow and a POC, which is easy to be set up. Uh, and uh, we know that the solution works. So if we do a POC, it's just to convince the customer as well. But of course, we don't need it. We know it. And uh, POC is, you shouldn't underestimate. Uh, so it's good if you have a tool which is easy to use. Um, because it's not just a lack of cloud migration expertise. Actually, many end customers, they lack cloud expertise in, in general. So not just the migration expertise, but the cloud expertise. Um, and this next point, this is very crucial for the end user, not for the MSP, but for the end user. What if uh, expectations are not met? What if something goes wrong? They always have to have the uh, the ability to roll back. And in our migration process, until you don't do the cutover, you still can just continue to work on the original side, no problem at all. And the downtime during the cutover should not be too long. Obviously, we all know these numbers that if Amazon is just one minute down, they lose 100 millions of revenue and stuff. So downtime is always an issue. Our solution is very fast. We can easily migrate several hundreds machines in a single hour and the downtime is predictable because we do test migrations so it's not a big surprise we can tell you before we do the migration how long the downtime will be and it will be very short anyhow next one so the solution obviously is using high stacks and uh, virtuoso in combined uh, force and uh, how this looks like ahmed will now continue to tell you Um, yeah, so, so what we are proposing here is that in order to make it easier for our cloud providers and uh, future cloud providers using Virtuoso technology is to make it easy for them to migrate uh, an unlimited number of workloads. So we are not here preventing from a number of uh, workloads perspective, 
and all the roads, as you see in the picture, are going to virtual. So no matter the, the solution that uh, any of the cloud providers is using, uh, we would like to migrate to a virtuoso uh, to, to our to our virtuoso solution, cloud platform solution. We are here to help you in order to uh, to make it. So it's a it's free, um, free from charge. We uh, we are we are working with high stacks and taking this cost in order to make it fast. Uh, because and this is why we we uh, we are partnering with high stacks for this uh, for this solution uh, we are uh, using one of the best solutions in order to make this uh, migration fast for you to make it fast in order for you to get time to revenue better uh, in a in a in a in a quicker time and as well your margin that uh, that you that we will be building the discussion about the dco um, faster. So if we are migrating from any of these solutions to Virtuoso, it's to gain from a cost of uh, of uh, technology, but as well from cost of maintenance. Uh, second thing is uh, foolproof. Uh, this is the, one of the most important uh, things in a in a migration project, uh, making sure that this uh, migration is uh, moving in the right way, and we are not having uh, uh, hiccups that are preventing us from moving forward or creating us bigger problems. Um, so we are using again high stack solution in order to make sure that all the process would be going in a, in the right in the right path. And then free, we we didn't want to charge anything for this migration. We would like you to use our solution. We would like you to go and power the alternative cloud and be an alternative cloud player in your markets. And this is why we are taking the cost of uh, this um, change and uh, this uh, migration. And we are supporting it 100% from level one to level three. Level one and two are done by Virtuoso, and level three is done by by Hasnik. So, bottom line is that all the roads uh, go to Virtuoso or leads to Virtuoso. No matter the solution that you are using today, it can be even an open stack based solution today. We are making it fast, foolproof, and free for you in order for you to go and capture all the market that you are serving and power the alternative cloud and be the the alternative cloud provider in your in your in your territory. It's a free migration for customers too. So you can provide it to your customers, your customers that are using today a either um, a hyperscaler or an enterprise solution that would like to use a, pro, a cloud provider uh, either for public cloud or private cloud. So so no, it's not only your current workloads, but it, it's as well your future. Uh, future one. So if you find a customer who is using one of these solutions, who you want to uh, to migrate to your uh, to your virtuoso based cloud, we are here to help you, and we are here to make sure that uh, that we are driving for your cloud consumption. Because all the, the 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 one thing that is important for cloud providers is consumption, and we need to make sure that our cloud providers are getting all the tools to make this consumption growing and growing and growing and growing. Um, and then now I would be giving it to Edwin to explain to us a high level, high stacks overview for the technical uh, audience that we have today as well. So Edwin, if you can, if you can explain a bit the, the technical and the high, high level overview, how this migration is done. Yes. So see what is written in red. We won't get into detail today, so uh, let make let me make it very short. Just uh, for general understanding, if you have some engineers here, high stacks Acura is a set of Docker containers managed by Kubernetes and provided to you as an image, and it works in an isolated environment. So it's not SaaS, it's not software as a service. You're never ever connected to high stack systems, which is very good to know if you have customers who care about the privacy. They don't have to be afraid that the U.S. company is, is processing the data. We don't even see it, let alone let alone um, uh, process it. So if we should support you, you have to give us access because you run uh, the customer, the MSP, you the partner. You deploy high stacks Acura from the image in a specific project in your Virtuoso cloud. This is the so-called high stacks controller, and from there you download agents which you install on a source side. Two ports need to be open, TCP443 and UDP12201 for the log files. And then those uh, agents on the source side automatically connect to the high controller VM, which is the VM you deployed in your 
the to the cloud from the image which we provide you. Automatically, automatically they connect, they take snapshots, start a replication, and store them in volumes, in blocks on this target site. As you can see, the high stakes service project is running inside the target cloud. Yeah, so servers on the source, ISIS controller VM in the virtuoso cloud, and then so called incremental replication by doing snapshots. That's all. Good. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, and now I would be moving to the case study part. Um, so DT, uh, represented by their CEO, Tolga Dinsha, who will be explaining to us a real case uh, of, uh, of what we were speaking about. So the, an alternative cloud provider, one of the fastest growing in Europe, uh, using these technologies, both technologies in order to gain and uh, create uh, more momentum into the alternative cloud in Turkey. Tolga? Hi, uh, thank you very much, Ahmed and Edwin, uh, for the introduction, uh, what we are doing uh, and how we do. Uh, so, my name is Tolga Dinchar. I am the founder and CEO of DT Cloud. Uh, so, I will explain uh, what is DT Cloud first and how we uh, developed DT Cloud. Uh, it is different than uh, what we know about virtualization cloud. We are doing the digital transformation cloud business. So uh, I founded DT in 2006 to uh, develop softwares to the uh, B2B market mostly uh, when I was freshman in the computer engineering in university. So in 2011, when I was graduated, so I would like to have a growth in the company. So we joined the system integration market about that. So we, we started to developing and uh, construction of the campus networks, legacy server and storage businesses, to run the softwares on premises. So we got the competence. Then we would like to grow, continue to our growth. So we expanded our uh, strategy to have the competence in carrier infrastructures. So communication infrastructures mostly, including 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, and also the fiber optics. So DT uh, was the uh, main SIM software of Turkish uh, advanced LT project, 4G project uh, in 2015. So we deployed the uh, 4G infrastructure before uh, we increased the fiber optics capacity 10G to 400 gigabits. Uh, then we uh, enabled the 4G in our country. So DT had the competence uh, <coughs> starting from the developing softwares, uh, running the softwares in the infrastructures, cable to the the wireless signal and we have the competence after 2018 when we first opened our R&Ds we started to enable digital transformation including the artificial intelligence and big data so uh, right now we are using the cloud to enable the uh, and faster the digital transformation uh, next slide please so uh, what is DT Cloud and uh, what is Alternative Cloud Platform? So uh, when we first met with Ahmed, uh, we, we were talking about a cloud for the, uh, an alternative to public clouds, global clouds. So mostly the understanding is the West and East cloud, cloud providers. So there is nothing for the European people and the rest of the regions. So we, we, we thought to in, invent a new thing. So we're also the infrastructure partner of DT Cloud uh, and also high stakes as a technology partner. So we thought that to create a, uh, an alternative and to cover the local regulations, it should be affordable pricing and it should solve the hyperscaling issues. Mostly uh, a little amount of the minority of the data centers are ready to host hyperscalers. So we uh, created a high level and low, low level new topology to run uh, hyperscale infrastructure in different data centers to combine uh, as a region and uh, as an availability zone together. So uh, an alternative cloud platform should be an answer for hyperscaling. So uh, it is secure. Uh, we put it blockchain, multiple blockchain protocols inside in DT cloud. So you can host a private blockchain or a node of a public blockchain in DT cloud. Uh, to cover your 
security uh, needs. Uh, and also our solution is hybrid. So you can host DT Cloud on-premise with our DT Cloud Edge appliances. So uh, this is our alternative cloud platform. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, Ahmed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, mostly, uh, I think uh, all parties know that these things uh, pass, yes, uh, RDS database services, MongoDB, AI chatbots, uh, RabbitMQ, S3 object storage, and IoT. So most of these uh, pictures are ready in phase one of the DT cloud, and we are developing uh, most powerful platform services like the big data platforms and AI platforms. And also, we have a different way uh, to do the cloud to uh, enable digital transformation. We have cloud services and cloud solutions. For example, when you saw uh, in the picture Cloud Campus, Cloud Campus is a solution catalog, including multiple cloud services to enable a Cloud Campus for you. It's You can think about you have multiple branches and you, you would like to see the whole branch offices as a same Cloud Campus. So we can enable this network tools and also when we talk about education cloud, it inside in their distance learning, big data analytics, learning management softwares running in uh, scalably in DT cloud. So most of these solutions on the way, uh, we have a solution department, uh, multiple solution managers uh, developing new solutions to enable uh, digital transformation in the industries. Please continue, next slide. Okay, so uh, I need to mention the real case study in here right now. So we developed DT Cloud uh, hybrid version to uh, give a solution for multiple problems. If you are in around the regulations, uh, some of the data you should host in your own premise. Or for example, if you have heavy workloads uh, to get EAS service, compute service from public clouds, it's expensive. So mostly uh, the large enterprises uh, would like to host the heavy workloads in their system rooms. So about that, uh, DT developed the on-premise solution and it is totally connected to DT's public cloud. So our, so our product is DT Cloud Management Center. So we, we are our uh, R&D and the product development team developing DT Cloud Management Center and DT Application Platform. It is not only a platform as a service. We have our uh, multi-service gateways in there. Behind of the multi-service gateway, we also have high stakes as a technology partner. So uh, when you see the uh, case study uh, on-premise to public cloud and also uh, other public clouds in the picture, so uh, any customer uh, in after medium enterprise and enterprise and large enterprise mostly using multiple cloud providers. So they should have the elasticity to uh, migrate the workloads in multiple clouds and it should be live migration. And also if they are using public clouds and hybridly on-premise, they need to prefer the way on-premise to on-premise backup or to cloud backup. So we, do, we are using high stacks. Firstly, we met with uh, Edwin and the team uh, to uh, create a solution for us uh, to backup OpenStack on premise So there is no other solution stably we tried. Uh, offline, it should be work offline in on-premise and get the backups uh, from the OpenStack uh, infrastructure as a service, compute cluster part. So then uh, we created the solution in uh, our DTH appliance then uh, we would like to have live migration solution to between the DT public cloud and the customer on premises. So uh, then high stakes uh, had a solution. We started to using this solution also. Uh, and this solution, which Ahmet and Edwin mentioned that, it can be multi-cloud. So any other public cloud provider, any other solution running behind in a data center like other hypervisors, uh, the high stakes, uh, platform can uh, do the live migrations. Also then we had a, 
we, we needed another solution. This solution should do the disaster recovery and the business continuity. Then we complete our technology stack with high stacks to, to empower all the needs. So the, right now, high stakes is our technology partner uh, behind in the DT application platform. Uh, it is uh, securing the customer's data, protecting the data, and giving chance to them uh, to uh, flexibility to run their workloads in any other cloud and on-premises. So uh, thanks to the high stakes uh, to uh, give us these solutions uh, empower the DT cloud. Next slide, please. Welcome, Tora. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So, so thank you, Tolga. Thank you for this. Uh, um, so how do we start? Uh, you, if you are interested by the full stack solution from uh, creating private public clouds to migrating any uh, workloads to this private uh, uh, or public cloud, please contact us at migration at virtuoso.com. We will be very very happy to uh, to get back to you and to speak uh, to you about your projects this email is shared between the three companies uh, if you have if you have as well some uh, business talk with dt you can you can reach the the, the address and uh, and tolga would be taking it from there and now we will go to a q and a session and here i would be uh, calling my friend andy pew who would be helping with uh, with the q and a uh, session and if you have any question Please uh, put it in the question sessions or in the chat so that we can uh, we can uh, help you with getting the answer. Splendid. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Ahmed. And gentlemen, um, uh, there's some insights there, and um, I'm sure we will get some questions coming from that. I've got some here which um, uh, have been emailed in. Um, uh, the first one we have is how long does the replication take? And does that have any impact on the business itself? Uh, Edwin, I think that's probably for you, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's quite simple. Actually, the replication takes as long as it takes. So the point is, it just uh, depends on two things, on the bandwidth available and on the uh, data amount. Uh, and surely not on the software, like sometimes people think and blame us for the delay. No, the point is, uh, if you have, 10 terabytes on a machine and just 10 megabits per second internet connection it can take three weeks probably a minimum and but if you then double the bandwidth instead of 10 20 three weeks go down to one and a half week so it's really pure mathematics but the good thing is and high sex needs just three megabits per second to work so that's enough but the more the better of course um, the good thing is that the replication happens in the background and a migration can be planned. It's not like a disaster recovery. So uh, uh, we have a calculator where we can tell you how long it takes based on the bandwidth you have available, based on the overall data you want to migrate, and then accordingly you can schedule. And it happens in the background, and there's no inter interruption of the business or downtime or anything else. Okay, that's great. Um, and um, I think you answered that the next question we had was, how much downtime? So minimal down, downtime, um, clearly. Yeah, downtime that. during the replication is no downtime. Anyhow, if we talk yeah. about downtime, we talk about the cutover, which is the moment when you really shut down the servers on the old side, on the old platform, and you make the final migration, actually, to the other side, to the promised yeah. land, to the proposal. And as I mentioned during the, rep, uh, the presentation, that it's a very... Uh, fast migration solutions so or the downtime is very predictable and uh, hundreds of uh, machines in a single hour so if we talk about downtime it may might be half an hour 45 minutes one and a half hour two hours and it's it's planable so you can schedule it so anyhow you do it from saturday to sunday at three o'clock or something like this excellent okay we have another one here um uh, is it common for migration of large vms to fail with timeout or, or uh, some other reason, uh, for example, uh, TCP or rsync limitations. How do you solve migration of a VM with two terabytes volumes in AWS to to VC virtuoso mm -hmm. cloud? Is so, well, from my perspective, maybe Tolga has has a real life experience. Well, what I know. We migrated uh, machines with uh, more than 10 terabytes even, 
and it was not ever a, any a problem uh, when we there were some 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 uh, issues yeah during the replication phase so when we do the it's a lift and shift model what we use so and and first we take the full copy of the machine and then the incrementals and what happens that uh, during the replication for whatever reason different reasons sometimes the machine gets into park status the replication stops and then oops you have to start all over again so when we are still in the phase of the first full copy of the machine replication and then imagine you have several terabytes it takes days uh, to replicate it and then maybe 10 days and on, on on day nine on day nine it stops for whatever reason you have to start all over again another 10 days oops and then the second approach the same after eight days we have to start all over again this is really not funny um so when we have machines with uh, more than uh, let's say seven or six terabytes then we think about um, a way to do some pre-seeding or take the disk out and put it directly into the to the target platform like this amazon snowmobile or service or how it's called so there are some 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 ways we can help uh if the bandwidth is not enough and it would take too long but this is just for the first replicate the phase of the full copy when we have done the first full copy replication and we are in the phase of the incremental replication then it doesn't matter at all if you park the replication it starts again from where you stopped it and you don't have to start from zero percentage again and um, then when we have the final cut over the data is already on the other side we just mm -hmm. uh, pull the very last incremental, which is minimum data, just to change the delta between two snapshots. So then it's not an issue. If there's issue with large uh, uh, machines, it's only in the first phase of the of when we take the full uh, copy. And uh, we have experiences, and uh, we managed successfully to migrate machines with more than 10 terabytes. OK, great. And um, does Highstack support Virtuoso storage? Yes, we still we support uh, any any uh, block storage uh, on the other side. So we use uh, we store blocks in uh, in volumes, and we use cloud native formats. So on AWS, we use uh, EBS uh, volumes, and in uh, OpenStack, it's uh, Cinder snapshots and Cinder volumes. So um, uh, the storage, uh, as long as as block storage, it's supported. But we also work uh, with uh, uh, depends on the use case. If we talk about disaster recovery, we use block storage. If we talk about backup, we use of course of course object storage and any S3 like so not S3 but S3 like storage can be used. Excellent. Um, can you give us some information on usage of high stacks in multi-tenant environments? How to uh, in multi-tenant environments? Please uh, repeat this question. Repeat the question. So how it works? Yeah, so, so it's multi tenant so, build. So the point is the high stakes the high stakes solution gets deployed uh, in the MSP's account. We can also deploy it in the end customer account. But if you have a typical MSP and he wants to uh, manage all his thousands of hopefully of hopefully thousands of customers from a single uh, portal, he can use it, he can do this. This is how you do it. You deploy high stakes Acura in your partner um, in your cloud as you run an M uh, virtuoso cloud you just uh, open a project a separate project there put the, the high sex uh, controller vm there and from this vm because it's a multi-tenant capable solution and portal you have a single pane of glass where you can uh, manage all your hundreds or thousands of customers that's uh, standard because high stacks was founded from the beginning with the intention to be sold via partners, by CSPs, MSPs, partner channel. So this is why you can expect multi-tenancy, white labeling, MSP reports, all these things, because our go-to-market is via partners. We, have, we hardly have uh, end customers directly. We give yeah. people get, and provide them to the MSP partners of uh, Vitoso. Excellent. Um, talk to us a little bit about test migrations. Um, and um and the assurance that partners should have in that they can 
do uh, as many test migrations as they want. Do you want to talk around a, a bit about that? Yeah, it's simply what it says, so you can test as long as you want, because I know that competitors, they sometimes give the licenses uh, per depending on the time. So if you want to have 30 days, the license, it's cheaper than 60 days. Uh, our license don't expire. Uh, it takes as long as, as it does. The POC is for free. So, uh, and you can test as many times as you want. Normally you would test like one or two times, uh, but in theory, if you want to do 27 test migrations, Go ahead, no limitation. So, so uh, very good for t uh, training purposes as well, in order to get the team. That's, that's team the point. Out. That's the point. Yeah. So, uh, this is how, uh, of course, we assist in the migration, as we show in this in the presentation. Uh, Virtuoso and Hystex uh, provide support, but uh, first of all, migration is no rocket science. Uh, nevertheless, it's a new software for the partners. And even the simple things in life, like riding bicycle, is difficult when you do it the first time. Uh, but that's uh, why you can do a POC, of course, and you have to get a sense because we know how the software works, but you have to learn it. So by doing a POC, you learn learn it by doing. And um, also, the MSP partners can remain with the test license in parallel all the time, so that they can, in between customer projects, still continue to to train and and also use this to do POCs themselves. Uh, for the customers, that's not a, that's not a problem. Okay, great. Um, can high stacks also be used for permanent backup um, or DR purposes? Yes. So high stacks Acura. That's the name of the software, by the way. So high stacks is a company, obviously, as you understood already by now. And Acura is the product because we have other products as well. And um, the Acura product is a software which covers three. Use cases, lifeguard migration, disaster recovery, and backup. Because the flows are similar. It's not the same. You cannot use the migration solution for making the R or vice versa, but the flow with deploying agents on the source, having the instance running in Virtuoso, the connection and taking snapshots, application consistent or crash consistent snapshots, incremental replication, lift and shift. The, the, the flow is very similar, and yes, uh, we also uh, we have. Uh, you can also use it for DR and for backup. Okay, great. Um, which, is recommended, which is actually this is actually what what Tolga said, which is the cool thing that you that he can have all has all all, all three things out of one hand, so uh, you don't have to go to look for another backup provider with High Six Sakura. You can do the migration, then protect the the, the customer with a, a disaster recovery. And uh, for those who say, well, disaster recovery sounds very good with fully automated uh, uh, failover and again, fully automated failback, wow, great. But the truth is, I don't need it because I just want to have my data saved for, with some uh, uh, retention settings uh, in for the next 20, 50 years, some long-term storage. Backup is enough. You can do it as well, of course, because if we can do the disaster recovery, which is much more complex, we can also offer some, some, some uh, backup, of course. Yeah, and um, moving forward, uh, Virtuoso will be uh, supporting and launching um, the high stacks DR and backup as a as part of our alliance as well. We're, we're uh, initially starting with migration, but um, that's great. Now, it was mentioned uh, that the model is lift and shift. How are configuration nuances required for destination? Example due to different IP addressing uh, resolved. Does that make sense? Again, please. I was uh, distracted again. Um, lift and shift is mentioned. How are configuration nuances uh, required for destination or differences required for the destination? For example, due to different IP addressing, how is this resolved? Okay, so. Uh... Of course, I'm a commercial guy, but what I can tell you is I just get the, 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 the keyword IP uh, addresses, uh, changes. So this is not a problem. It's lift and shift, yes. And what we do is uh, mean, it means we, we migrate on the, on the VM level. So we're not on the application level. We're application agnostic, actually. We migrate the whole, we replicate the whole machine as such with everything running on it or attached to it. 
data and metadata, IP addresses, MAC addresses, subnets, but there are things we cannot migrate like VPNs, firewalls, things, but uh, what we can do during the cutover on the fly is actually um, change the uh, flavors because two CPU on VMware EXI is not the same like two CPU on OpenStack. We can change also the IP addresses. So if the question was regarding if it's possible to change the IP addresses on a destination site or keep them, it's up to you. Both is possible. You can remain with the same IP addresses or you can change them on the fly during the cutover. No problem. IP Excellent. addresses never was an issue. And to follow on from that, and um, actually this is Damien again. Thank you, Damien. Um, is the high tax migration just a lift and shift? Yes, we've discovered that it is. Um, the exact VMs of source are replaced to the destination. So is that the definition? Or does it pull the contents from it inside the source VM and place it um, into new VMs at the destinations? So example, running a different OS version or something similar. Yes, so uh, you cannot, what, we cannot change the, the OS version, version on the fly, but you can of course, uh, this is exactly, we pull the data, we pull the data from the source and then uh, put it into new VMs on the, on the target. And um, this uh, actually is used for, some, for example, Red Hat is using our migration solution for, for the use case of um, version upgrades. So if someone is, uh, is uh, running on um, Red Hat uh, 2013 and they want to go to 2016, uh, mm -hmm. Then uh, they use uh, high stack, so it's used also for version upgrades. Okay, great. Um, just following on from the previous question as well, um, uh, if you change the IP address of a VM running a web server, um, you would need to change the web server configuration file. And so the original question was, uh, how are the configuration? How, uh, what are the nuances? Uh, between the destination due to different IP addressing on that. Well, the nuances, I don't know. I know. I just know, uh, sorry to be that superficial in this case, that I, we never had issues with IP addresses, but there might be things uh, because which, which the, the, the partner needs to change before. And this is why it's possible because some hands-on something is needed. If there's questions from Damien, I invite Damien uh, or whoever asked this question to send an email directly to uh, the email address in the slides or to add, add, add or to my email address. Uh, and then um, uh, I will forward it to our CTO, a product manager or some other engineer, and we will reply to it for sure. Splendid. Um, we've got another couple here. Um, what kind of snapshots do we get um, uh, for application consistent or crashed uh, a crash consistent snapshots. What's what's available within? So the problem is the snapshots are always consistent. So full consistency is always guaranteed. It depends on the operation system. If we talk about Windows, we get so-called uh, application consistent snapshots. We use VSS, which is the Windows functionality, and get application consistent snapshots. And on Linux, we have uh, our own way, the high stack way, to emulate VSS. We call it H high stack SS and get so-called crash consistent snapshots. Uh, but uh, the full consistency is always guaranteed because there are different ways how to take crash consistent snapshots. Most companies take it on the IO stream level, but then you don't get full consistency. We instead first send a command to memory to flush all the data to the disk so that we really make sure that full, full consistency is there. So crash consistent snapshots on Linux, Application consistent snapshots on, on Windows. Excellent. Um, how does VMware um, map to the OpenStack network? That's from Mikhail. So, how does VMware um, map across the OpenStack network? Well, I don't, maybe some, maybe uh, Tolga can answer this because uh, with also. Tolga, are you still there? Uh, unfortunately, Tolga had to go for a for a for a for an urgency. 
uh, but what I, what I, yeah, what I propose is that we send this question to the migration at virtuoso.com and we will be getting an answer. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll respond. Any questions we don't cover, we will respond back to. I've got one last one here. Um, what's the difference? Um, so what's the difference between an internal and external agent? Okay, it is quite simple. So um, as the name already says, internal agent is running inside the server. So remember, the agent, the replication agents uh, are installed on the source side. And then it's the question where the internal agent inside the server. Uh, and then there is the option for external agents, which are not running inside but let's say close to the server on the hypervisor on the infrastructure level. So in the case of VMware, we deploy an external agent in each VMware XI host, which is of course an advantage if you have no access uh, to the server because the customer doesn't allow it, then difficult to, uh, to install the internal agent if you don't get access. And then we can use external agents, but the condition is for external agents that the source is VMware. Otherwise, we have to use internal agents. From a flow perspective, it doesn't matter. People think sometimes external agent is somehow cooler, fancier, uh, more convenient. No, it doesn't matter. For the flow itself, actually, it does not matter if it's internal or external agent. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, um, we haven't got any more time for any more questions, but if you do have some more, migration at virtuoso.com and we'll respond back equally. Um, obviously, um, if you want to ask any additional questions in any areas, um, Ahmed, over to you. Yeah, so thank you, Th thanks, Andy, thanks, Edwin, for uh, for these clarifications and these uh, these answers. Again, uh, emphasizing the fact that you can send us the questions to migration uh, at virtuoso.com. We will be happy to answer your questions or schedule calls if you want to dig more into one specific project or whatever. Um, so we are at the end of the webinar. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for our speakers. Uh, and uh, let's speak. Let's get. Let's keep in touch. Let's make every single customer come into your alternative cloud. We are committed to this. We are committed to make the alternative cloud the first choice for SMB and enterprise to go to. And uh, we will work relentlessly in order to make it. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you all. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.